I marvel at what the power of God is able to do in the life of men. For someone you came here as Saul, you are living as Paul. The encounter that you have will birth a very powerful ministry from tonight. Please, I want you to lend me your attention and listen very attentively to the charge I'll be bringing to you by the Spirit. It matters that we pay attention to the Word of God. It matters that we open up our hearts to receive God's Word. You may have heard me say that God's method has always been and will always be His Word. God's method to lift is by His Word. God's method to bless is by His Word. God's method to bring honor to a man is by His Word. God's method to restore is by His Word. God's method to empower is by His Word. Hallelujah. So if you ignore the Word of God, you have also ignored everything the Word carries. The Word of God is like a tray. If you want to serve a visitor that you honor so much, you would put the variety of the things you intend to serve the person in a tray. Once the man sees the tray coming, he starts to smile because most likely there's a three-course meal captured in that tray. There are drinks, there are foods of all kinds. That is how it is. When the word of God is coming to you, it's like a spiritual tray. In it is healing. In it is wisdom. In it is empowerment. In it is restoration. You believe that tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's consider a few scriptures. I sense that there will be many impartations while you are hearing me teach. And the reason why impartations happen is that they come as the spirit of the word. Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2. And the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Ezekiel 2 and verse 2. And the spirit entered into me. Hallelujah. The Bible emphasizes the necessity of faith in the life of the believer. The Bible is not silent as to the fact that we have been called by God to a life of victory and to a life of excellence. The Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that walking in the experience of victory is predicated on the kind and the quality of faith that you and i possess hallelujah several places in scripture attest to the fact that a man who is full of faith is also a man who will command great exploits in life and in destiny beginning from noah our father abraham and you read down the line to the apostles the early church the bible credits supernatural happenings and manifestations in the life of the believer to his or her faith this is very important in fact the bible puts it this way this is the victory that overcometh the world it says even our faith hallelujah every time jesus rebuked men he credited their unbelief or their lack of result to the kind or the level of their faith and the Bible identifies several levels of faith. There is no faith for the sake of time. There is little faith. The Bible identifies great faith. Then the Bible identifies exceeding great faith. These are the four levels of faith that the Bible captures. That it is possible for a believer to have zero faith. Zero faith. No faith. Then little faith O ye of little faith the bible will say then great faith then exceeding great faith and you see all of these levels of faith will purchase different levels of spiritual realities different levels of results my assignment tonight is to help show you a very deep spiritual formula that can help men build their faith and bring them to a position where with it 
they are able to command exploits are we together it is in every believer's destiny according to scripture to live an extraordinary life that is always supernatural you do not have to be in the fivefold ministry to command extraordinary results are we together we have been called preordained our preordination based on scripture is for us to live a life of excellence and a life of glory ephesians 2 10 the bible says we are his workmanship created in christ jesus it says unto good works which god had before ordained that we should walk in them so it is our preordination in christ to walk in a life of excellence and grace are we still together yes john chapter 15 and verse 8 i always want to quote that scripture the bible says herein is my father glorified when ye bear much fruit it says so shall you be my disciples john 15 16 you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit not that you should go and bring back excuses he gave unto one five talent another two and then the last one two of them brought back results and they were commended well done thou good and faithful servant one came with an excuse and he was called a wicked and unprofitable servant god desires profit in ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 the bible calls us the revealers of the manifold wisdom of god he says now to the intent that unto principalities and powers that it might be made known by the church the manifold multifaceted wisdom of god hallelujah so it is in our preordination to live a life of excellence and a life of grace daniel 11 and verse 32 the bible says in the b part but the people that do know their god it says they shall be strong capacity and they shall do exploits not talk exploits not explain exploits not write books about exploits do exploits hallelujah let me show you two scriptures to begin to build what god is doing tonight even in our lives faith can grow this is powerful faith can grow an individual's faith can grow and become robust and with it you are able to command great victories even in the spirit there are two questions recorded in scripture that the disciples asked jesus directly many really but two as far as their spiritual growth is concerned number one teach us to pray number two increase our faith they came to Jesus and they saw that Jesus did not seem to be teaching them about prayer like John taught them. And they said, listen, there's something about the way we pray. We're not getting results. He said, teach us to pray. And then when they saw Jesus, that should be Matthew 15 thereabout from verse 21 to 28. He healed the woman's daughter who came crying. And when they saw that healing, they said, increase our faith increase our faith we know that the reason we are not able to do this is a faith problem that was entire and sidon hallelujah in luke chapter 17 5 and 6 luke 17 please give it to us media luke chapter 17 5 and 6 that is the reference there the apostles said unto the lord increase our faith faith can grow but it only grows when it meets passion and desire if you do not see the need for increase in faith your faith will not grow and if your faith does not grow there are many possibilities you will screen you will see in scripture and even quote them that may never be captured in your christian experience for instance they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover that will remain a story until your faith grows every statement in scripture has a condition that makes it active in your life and if that condition is not fulfilled not satisfied it will remain a prophetic speaking that never comes to pass 
Are we learning already? Hallelujah. Now, there are two keys very quickly to growing your faith. The first is found in Galatians chapter 3 from verse 5. The full text is 5 to 9, but let's consider Galatians 3 and verse 5. There are two components to growing and building your faith. Number one is called the hearing of faith. He therefore that ministered to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you. How does he do it? Doeth he by the works of the law? Question. Or by the hearing of faith? There is such a thing as the hearing of faith. This is the first component that is responsible for any faith that must become robust. What you hear is very important. The correctness of the information. Listen carefully. There are many believers who cannot have their faith built because they are hearing, but what they are hearing does not have the power to impart faith. Not every information imparts faith. There is an exact spiritual information that sustains the energy and the power to impart faith. Are we together now? So the Bible says to be careful what you hear. That should be Mark chapter 4. I believe 23 to 24. The hearing of faith. Mark. It says if any man has ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 24. And he said, take heed what you hear. Everybody say, take heed. Jesus is warning them now. And he's saying, do not give your attention to every information. Take heed what you hear. Because what you hear has an implication on your destiny. There are people who stop believing God because they had something. There are people who stop living by the word because they had something. In the school of faith, the foundation for a robust faith is the correctness and the accuracy of your spiritual information. Are we together? When God wants to help a man and wants to build your faith, he connects you to streams of accurate spiritual revelation, accurate information. When God gives you the gift of good men, the gift of a teaching priest, the gift of a pastor according to his heart, as in Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15, he says, and I will give you pastors according to my heart. Are we together? And that they shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. There are many believers whose Christian experience began to change the moment they encountered accurate information. There are many people who believe, but they have believed a lie. And so when they stand with that information in the presence of real life situations, it becomes impotent because the seed of truth is not in it. He said, sanctify them by thy truth. To sanctify means to set apart. See that? Thy word is truth. You want to build your faith? You must take the responsibility of walking with the spirit and walking with structured mentorship to help edit the things that you hear and the things that you believe. At the pastors, the leaders conference in the morning, we consider the scripture in Acts chapter 19 from verse 1 down to 4. The Bible says, it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, he came to Ephesus. And the Bible says, finding certain disciples, verse 2, he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Their response, and they said unto him, we have not so much as heard. Everybody say heard. Hmm. The problem was the hearing. The reason why they did not experience the Holy Ghost was somebody told them something else may not have been the accurate information. The problem is the hearing. There was no hearing of faith. Are we together now? Yes. So most believers have random spiritual information and they hope that one or two of those information will translate to a victorious life. There are certain things if you do not hear 
and you do not believe as a believer you will never walk in power you will never walk in grace there is an exact body of information that constructs victory for a believer did you hear what i said not every spiritual information translates to a victorious life you must obtain grace from god and bless be god that God gives you a pastor who through the sacrifice of alignment is able to distill spiritual knowledge and serve you with knowledge that is already prepared. One of the reasons why you honor men of God who lead well is because of the sacrifice and the pain they have taken. Many of them using their own lives as guinea pigs to edit what works and what does not work and to serve you accurate life applicable result producing truth that the moment you receive it it's ready to work in your life they save you the labor of having to edit sense from nonsense they bring everything together and serve you with grace and when god gives you such a man honor him when god connects you to such a people honor them are we learning there are certain things every believer must know when it has to do with the school of knowledge there are some things if you do not know you will fail in life number one you must know who you are in christ as simple and as elementary as this truth is the foundation for walking and living in excellence is the revelation of who you are in christ number two you must be aware of the vast spiritual resources that have been coordinated towards your life in Christ. It's not enough to just know who you are. You must know the spiritual resources that are available in Christ. The Bible calls them exceeding great and precious promises. It says that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Do you know what God has given you? The worship team again sang it beautifully excelling by the blood the word the name do you understand the spiritual resources that are given to you how many of you know that if i love you sincerely and i'm sending you probably to go somewhere at the island and run an errand for me i will most likely make arrangements for your transportation is that true i will most likely give you the money to make any purchases god is not so irresponsible to send you and not put in place the spiritual provision that you do not know how to access them does not mean you were not given ephesians 1 and verse 3 blessed be the god of our father who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ do you believe that that he that did not spare his son but offered him freely for us how much more how will he not much more with him give us all things freely in fact the bible tells us according to first corinthians 2 that one of the ministries of the holy spirit is to reveal to us to bring us to the knowledge the comprehension of the things that have been freely given to us there are certain things if you do not hear if you do not have a man of god who helps you understand who you are in christ we live in a world of complicated identity depending on who you are listening to you go somewhere and someone calls you stupid and you believe it somebody else said don't mind who is calling you stupid then you change then somebody tells you you are a failure then you believe no he says but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day conviction is a product of knowledge there are things if you do not know you will dance to every tune till you dance your way to a failed life are we learning who you are in christ it's important for you to know the resources that have been given to you there are many things that god has given us as captured in his word for instance he says when men say there is a casting down you will say there is a lifting up it means there is an agency in the spirit that insists that you remain on top do you know what it is and do you know how to activate it you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you i'm teaching you how to have the faith that produces exploits listen let me tell you sincerely there are some things i believe can never happen to my life negatively no you see light can lift you beyond certain things 
and you will know that you have left certain realms forever one of it is i believe till the day i see the face of jesus i will never lack help i've indoctrinated myself to believe in the possibility of the ministry of men you may have heard me say if god wants to bless 10 people in this church i will start praying for the remaining nine It's true and this is not empty talk life will test your conviction life will test your conviction i found out from scripture that everybody in christ is a blessing genesis 12 3 in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed you see you have this revelation that no matter where you go there must be help that will arise for you I have learned from scripture and I've learned from study. It's impossible to be hated by all men. Even Satan is not hated by all men. There are people who love him in spite of the fact that they know he's the devil. So why will everybody in Lagos hate you? That means there's a problem somewhere. I said it during the minister's conference that even terrorists have wives. They exchange vows with the wives. The woman turn and say, yes, I will live with you forever. Say amen. amen. All you need is one person by God. If you think it will take a crowd to bless you, you don't know God. One person. One Pharaoh. One Ahasuerus. Are we together? One Abimelech. This is how God works. There may be many noisemakers, but just one encounter. And there are 8 billion people on earth. this is my conviction so you don't just say i have favor based on what understanding the hearing of faith the hearing of faith i believe that there is no enchantment and no divination for as long as i'm serving the lord you see that now i truly believe that if i did not have this light by god's grace only god would tell how many times they've carried our names to watch shrines and said what then <laughs> joshua selman make sure you don't see sunday and sunday here am i again you see investigating who who hates you is a useless body god did not give you that ministry in Build a garrison around your life by light so that it does not matter. He said, No weapon fashioned against you. Do you believe that? Or are you just quoting it? Fashioned. Fashioned. I was talking to our dear people and I said, um, When we started, when we started our ministry, someone truly, not just an exaggerated story one of our overflows they just carried a charm and i was even away on a trip and the owners of the facility called me and said there's something they've discovered i said really leave it for me i know what to do with it i said who is this foolish person now who wants to kill himself for nothing instead of you to come to church and receive the same blessing you want you now want to die for nothing he suffered no man to do them wrong this is the basis of that confidence don't make bold statements without a scriptural garrison this is why many believers get disappointed god forbid nobody will touch me based on what because you think men like you you are joking wake up he suffered no man to do them wrong he never said to do all wrong there are people you can hurt and go free but there are some them immune by the jealousy of god he reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. It's true. It's true. Are you learning now? So the first component, building Bible faith, depends on the quality and the correctness of the spiritual information you hear. Let me show you something. I hope you are learning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Give us Luke chapter 13, please. For sake of time, I'll read 11, 12, then I'll jump to 16 and 17. 
the bible says this is the story of the woman remember the woman who was bound 18 years i want to show you an interesting story the power of god is going to come on someone now i just saw this no no it's not amen it's not everybody there's somebody the power of god and please that person will start running just hold the person so it doesn't injure themselves let me just do my thing the, the way the holy spirit works and sometimes why he does these things i do not know but the prophetic word for that person is that you will never remain at that same level that there is there is a there is a cause that have kept people in your family in one position and so what the spirit of god is doing now is a prophetic act an energy of the spirit will rest upon you so when that person please i want you to just hold the person so you don't maybe so they don't injure themselves why god does this honestly i do not know sometimes he just does this as a sign and a wonder let's continue behold there was a woman watch this who had a spirit of infirmity how long 18 years and she bowed herself together and could in no wise lift herself the terrible thing about this scripture is that she was going to church for all those years she went to church there was somebody she listened to every other day when jesus saw her in church he called her and said woman you are loose from your infirmity follow carefully uh-huh maybe let's just read it down to 13 then he laid his hands upon her follow closely and immediately she was made straight and glorified god next verse please the bible says when the ruler of the you see those people the ruler of the synagogue this is a category of people to not listen to they answered with indignation because that jesus had healed her on the sabbath day and they said unto the people there are six days look at the kind of sermons they were listening to this woman was almost dying and see the content of the information they were serving them there are six days in which men ought to walk in them come and be healed don't come on this day the lord rebuked them and said you are hypocrites if your goat falls on sunday i'm paraphrasing it using a nigerian expression if your goat falls somewhere on sunday will you not go and pick it will you say that i will leave it there until monday he said you are hypocrites verse 16 now jesus brings an information that this woman had never heard he said ought not this woman help me being a daughter of abraham this is the basis were you not mentored that when god called abraham he left a promise to him that in thee shall all the families be blessed and that that blessing was for abraham and his seed that seed being christ and according to galatians 3 29 it says and if ye be christ then are ye heirs according to the promise do you not know that based on your connection to abraham you should not suffer this i'm sure the woman was saying i've never been told listen to me there are many believers today who would have been blessed and i'm speaking generally to the body of christ if only they heard the right things it matters what you hear not just that you hear is the reason why every man of god must obtain grace from god and stay with the word come up with with information that is true indeed to serve god's people not just opinions so that you don't say amen to what will never come to pass are we together so the hearing of faith it matters what you hear have you been told that you have been exalted with christ raised up with him far above principalities far above all vicissitudes of life the bible says he that cometh from above is above all if you don't believe that it will not work for you are we together now that when men say there is a casting down their believer for you there is a lifting up and constructing the understanding that produces victory in your life 
You cannot have random spiritual knowledge, a mix of culture, wise sayings, and a little of Bible, and you want exploits. No. Your understanding must be so altered and adjusted to give the spirit room to produce power through your life. You cannot help weak people when you believe you are weak too. It doesn't work that way. You see that? You must believe you are the individual standing by grace at a vantage position. Then you are able to help. That everything your hand finds to do, you do it with grace and that it works for you because your hands are blessed. The day you have this understanding, nothing dies in your hands. Believe me, this is not just church talk. Nothing dies because grace flows through understanding. Grace flows through understanding. Grace flows through understanding. It is your understanding that becomes the pipe for grace to flow through your life. 